Thank you very much, Jenny. That was very, very nice. And greetings to all of you uh, with masks and all. I'm glad you're here, and I pray that God's spirit of Christmas will be with you this evening and follow you into tomorrow as well. So again, greetings. We're really glad that you're here. I did want to mention one thing, and let me grab it real quick. You'll notice inside your bulletin, it mentions about blowing out the candle. And we have figured out that you can't blow them out with your mask on. So don't be afraid to go like, okay, does everyone have that down? Don't worry about that at all. Want everyone to be safe. Would you join me in our first hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, you can find it in your bulletin or in the hymnal number 240, and we will sing stanzas one, two, and three. you stand with me and join me in our prayer this evening? God of the prophets, we hear you speaking again in the word made flesh. Help us to listen with awe and wonder and to look with seeing eyes for your presence right here, right now. We lift our voices in joyous response to your message of peace. Grant us your peace, that we may be peacemakers as we bear witness to your light. Amen. Would you join me in our call to worship? Break forth into singing, all God's people. Hear the good tidings of salvation and peace. There is a new song in the air. The whole universe responds to the child in our midst. The light shines amid our gloom. The word comes to make a difference in our lives.
You may be seated. Let us sing our second hymn, Away in the Manger, number 217, stanzas 1, 2, and 3. Our scripture reading for this evening is Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is a sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to thy word. Then the angel departed. May the blessings be upon the reading of God's word this day. Amen. O oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. 
Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night when Christ was born. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Change shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus raise we, let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord, oh praise his name forever, his was born, O oh, night divine, O oh, night, O oh, night divine. Amen. Thank you very much, Shane. That was beautiful. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And these are the words. Then, opening their treasure chest, the wise men offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Merry Christmas, everyone. Are we awake? Merry Christmas. It's good to have you with us today. And for those of you who are watching by way of internet. If you're ever in our area, please drop in and worship with us and our family. One year, a father was so excited about Christmas. He was getting the tree house for his three children. He found it in a Sears catalog, and so he ordered it, and he was so, so excited. Unfortunately, the company made a big mistake and sent the man a build-it-yourself sailboat instead. He immediately called the company and he complained. The operator who took his call, tried to calm him down, and said, said, sir, please, sir, we, we sincerely apologize for our mistake. And then she added these words. But consider yourself lucky. Somewhere out there, on a lake, 
a man is trying to sell your treehouse. Here's the question. What will you get for Christmas? What will you get for Christmas? Maybe a treehouse? Maybe a sailboat? What will you get for Christmas? I think all of you have been a part of those discussions, haven't you? My daughter calls me every year. She lives in Fort Collins, and she calls and says, Dad, what do you want for Christmas? I think we've all been a part of those discussions. And so then you send out your wish list of all, Pastor Brad, all the books that you want, and a new Alice Chelmer tractor. What do you think, Pete? But now, like many of you, the gifts that I like to receive are different. They differ from what I wanted when I was younger. I just want to see my kids and my grandchildren. That's my Christmas gift. By the way, my, not all my kids could make it up, at, yet they're all sick. And so I have to wait and see if they can come in, mon hopefully by Monday at least. But my children and my grandchildren are my Christmas gifts. How many of you agree with me on that? I just love to watch the kids open up the gifts and see what they get. That's a gift to me, my children and my grandchildren. What does the Bible say about gift giving? The story is quite revealing and surprising. It is not about you getting, rather it's about you giving. Even more so, it's not about you giving to your family or to your friends. Rather, it's about you giving to the little child lying in the manger who is wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now, I am completely aware that what I'm talking about is not the traditional message for Christmas that you probably have heard through the years and maybe want to hear. But this is the Christmas message. It is the real Christmas story. You see, the three kings, or the wise men, did not bring gifts for you, but they brought gifts for Jesus. The Christmas story is not about getting. It's about giving of yourself. Giving yourself to God. <clears throat> Just imagine for a moment. If it was your birthday, Doug, can you imagine this for a little bit? It's your birthday. You're going to be 30 years old, Doug. And so it's your birthday, and, and you invited all of your family and all of your friends, and they brought gifts. But not for you. They gave them to each other instead. That'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Well, that's our modern-day Christmas, isn't it? Everyone brings a gift, but not for Jesus. It's no wonder the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let your gifts be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that God will find acceptable. The gift 
that we are talking about is you. This is what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 16. Give me your heart, my child. Give me your heart and let your eyes delight in my ways. Theologically, you could say it this way. The greatest gift that God gave you was his son, Jesus. And the greatest gift that you can give to God is yourself. See, the Christmas message is about you giving of yourself to God. Christmas, the birth of Jesus, is a call to the world, a call to you to give your life to God. In 1872, the poet, Christina Rossetti, wrote a poem that only appeared after her death. About 30 years later, the poem was set to music, entitled, A Christmas Carol. Today, we know it as In the Bleak of Midwinter. But there's a fascinating backstory to this beloved Christmas carol. Rossetti was a devout follower of Jesus Christ, who for many years volunteered at St. Mary's of Magdalene, House of Charity. It was a refuge for women coming out of the life of prostitution. In the Victorian era of her day, the poor economy forced women to make a living by selling their bodies. Some of the women were girls that were only 12 years old. Rossetti's efforts in offering Christ and helping these women find better jobs to these marginalized women came through some of the poems that she wrote. For instance, in the bleak of midwinter, a Rossetti, she reads, it reads, heaven cannot hold nor earth sustain. Jesus in yet a stable place and a manger full of hay sufficed for him. In light of Christ's great power and love, Rossetti's poem asks, what can I give him? Poor as I am, what can I give him? This question would have weight, weighed heavily on these women who are struggling to come out of the life of prostitution, with their lives broken, what could they possibly give to Jesus? Especially since heaven cannot hold him. According to Rossetti's poem, there is only one thing that all of us, every one of us can give to this baby Jesus. No matter who we are, this is what she wrote. If I were a shepherd, I would bring him a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give him my heart. What beautiful words. Regardless of your tainted past or your present struggles, there is one gift that Christ wants more than anything, and it is your heart. No matter who you are or where you've been, you can give Christ your heart.
to reach out to the poor, to the suffering, to the marginalized. So where do we start? Well, first give Jesus your heart. Make Christ first place in your life by the way you live, by reaching out and helping others, by faithfully giving and living. Make Jesus first in your life, in your finances, in your relationships, and in the ministry of Aldersgate United Methodist Church. This is what the Bible says, Luke chapter 12, verse 34. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where is your heart this evening? Where is your heart this Christmas Eve? There's a couple questions to ask. Why do you think giving a gift to Jesus is rarely thought about during Christmas? Most of you know I lost a son years ago. Every year, when we open up gifts, there's always one gift under the tree for my son that I lost. What would happen if each and every one of us did the same for Jesus? Second, what gift are you willing to give Jesus this Christmas? You see, the Bible says that today is a day of salvation. Not yesterday, not tomorrow. Today, what gift are you willing to give Jesus this Christmas? And always remember this, there is nothing you can do to make God love you more, and there's nothing you can do to make God love you less. God really loves you. Amen? Amen. Let us sing Joy to the World, number 246 in your hymnal, stanzas 1, 2, and 4. This time we're going to have the lighting of the Christ candle. Uh, Jay, I don't know how dark it's going to be, but when we uh, sing Silent Night, we may need a little light for that. So we'll just have to play that by ear. Jen, Pete.
Over the past weeks, we have prepared for this night by lighting the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. Tonight, we light the final candle, the Christ candle. In John's Gospel, we read, All things come into being through Christ, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness is not overcome it, did not overcome it. We rejoice in Christ, that Christ is born. He is the light of the world. This is good news of great joy for all people because we celebrate the Christ, that Christ the Lord our Savior has been born. God gave, came to earth to save us and restore our relationships to God through Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus is the hope of the world. Jesus is our perfect peace. Jesus is our joy. And he is the love of God demonstrated for us. Praise God for the gift of his son, Christ. The Savior is born. Let us pray. Jesus, Jesus your coming, coming into the, the world, world has brightened our weary, weary hearts with hope, hope peace, peace, joy, and, and love. love. Call, Call us, us out of the darkness, darkness and empower us to proclaim the good news found in you alone. Amen. Let us stand. Hold your candles high. I hope that you have a wonderful Christmas Eve and Christmas with your family and with your friends, and may God bless you with all of his love and with all of his grace. And so for our benediction, the light of Christmas star to you, 
the warmth of a home and heart to you, the cheer and goodwill of friends to you, the hope of childlike heart to you, the joy of a thousand angels to you, the love of the Son and God's peace to you. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.